And so in order to really focus on the good that God is doing on the inside of us, we've got to stay away from the three distractions that try to take our eyes off of the good that God is doing. Come on, I want you to look at the person beside you again and tell them God is doing a good work in you. Come on, God is doing a good work in you. God is doing a good work in you. So there's three distractions that come up. Jealousy, rivalry, and comparison. These three things try to distract our eyes and make us focus somewhere else rather than where does happiness come from? Happiness comes when we focus on the good that God is doing. Where? In me. Come on, somebody say, in me. In me. And so these three things try to distract us. James chapter 4, verse 2. Are you jealous and covet what others have? And your desires go unfulfilled, so you become murderers. To hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and not, are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment, and the happiness that you seek. So you fight and you war. You do not have because you do not ask. Or you do ask God for them, yet you fail to receive because you ask with the wrong purpose or evil or selfish motives. Your intention is that when you get what you desire to spend it on sensual pleasures. You are like unfaithful wives having illicit love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes a stand as an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that the scripture is speaking to no purpose that says the spirit whom has is dwelling in us yearns over us and yearns for the spirit to be welcomed with a jealous love. But he gives us more and more grace. Somebody say more and more grace. He gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet the evil tendencies as all others fully. That is why he says God himself sets himself against the proud and haughty, but he gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. Wow, that's a portion to start off with today, isn't it? Come on, look at the person beside you say, he's gonna give you more and more grace. More and more grace. You know, last week we talked about humility. If you weren't here last Sunday, I encourage you to go to greatchurch.ca and watch that message. But it says that he's going to give us more and more grace. He gives grace continually to those who are humble enough to receive it. I want you to look at the person beside you and say, I'm humble enough to receive it today. Come on, I'm humble enough to receive it. We need more and more of the grace of God. The Apostle Paul was visiting the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. He talked about, for I'm afraid that perhaps when I come, I may find that you not, may not be as I wish and that I may not be as you wish. And perhaps there may be strife for jealousy, anger, tempers, disputes, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. He's talking to the church and he's saying, I'm coming for a visit. And I'm a little concerned that when I get there, there might be some disorder. And he's like, and I'm a little concerned that when I get there, the message I give to you, you may not like the message I give to you because I'm going to have to talk about this disorder. He's talking about the three, these three distractions that keep us from focusing on the good that God is doing on the inside of us. Come on, look at the person beside you. We're interactive today. Look at him and say, God's doing a good work in you. God's doing a good work in you. He's doing a good work on on the inside of you. In James chapter 3 verse 16 says, For wherever there is jealousy, envy and contention, rivalry and selfish ambition, there will be confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. That word rivalry there, it means competition. And so wherever there is competition in God's family, when it's, it's trying to one-up somebody else, wherever there's competition, it says there's going to be confusion. Another translation said there's going to be chaos, right? And, and so we have to recognize that to be happy, God wants us to focus on what he's doing on the inside of us, on the inside of me. He wants us to look in and say, wow, I got a good God. I got a good God who hasn't given up on me. I got a good God who's moving on the inside of me. I got a good God who's transforming me from the inside out and to get our eyes off of other people. You know, rivalry competition is all about who's going to get there first. As, as if there's a prize at the end and, and who's going to get there first. And competition starts to want to hold other people back and push oneself to 
the forefront. Philippians 2, 3 to 5 says, do nothing out of rivalry and conceit. The word conceit means excessive pride in oneself. I like how it's just like a little excessive. Okay. Do nothing out of rivalry and conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Look at the person beside you and say, you're more significant than me. Tell them that you're more significant than me. Let each of you not only look after his own interests, but also the interests of others. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So this talks about another translation says that the mind of Christ has been given to you. It says it is yours. You're like, how am I going to, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get my focus off of other people? This rivalry, this comparison, this competition, how am I going to get my focus on the good? It says God has given us the mind of Christ. It says it, he's already given it to us as a gift that we can receive the mind of Christ as we continue to put the word of God in our life, as we continue to surrender to the Holy Spirit, we begin to see the mind of Christ come out of us. So that's why we need the healing of the heart. And Pastor Steve was sharing about that. And when I encourage you Wednesday nights, come be part of the process. Don't just have an event, a one-time event of God touching you, but embrace the process of allowing God to heal your heart. In James chapter 3, 16 to 17, it says, if you are jealous of other people and you want to make yourself important, that will cause trouble. People will argue and fight against one another. They will do all kinds of bad things. But if God makes you really wise, you will live in a completely good way. That is the most important thing. And you will live in a way that brings peace. You will be kind to one another so that you will become friends. You will listen to them and not argue. You will forgive them and do many good things to help them. You will choose. You will not choose between people and you will not be a hypocrite. Now, the word hypocrite means this, a person who claims or pretends to have a certain belief about what is right, but who behaves in a way that disagrees with their beliefs. Turn to the person beside you and say, occasionally I've been a hypocrite. Come on, tell them the truth today, right? It's like, you know, you believe a certain thing, but you're behaving in a way that doesn't agree with what you believe. Come on, we've all... Don't look at me like that. We've all been a hypocrite at sometimes. We got to be honest enough to, to embrace the word of God, what God's doing in us, right? So it talks about if you're jealous of other people and you want to make yourself important, how it causes trouble. It causes chaos because our eyes are in the wrong direction. Our eyes are not focused on what God wants us to focus on, which is the good, good, good things that he is doing inside of our life. And so we've got to be able to start to focus in the right direction. Come on with me today. Say, God, you're doing. God, you're doing a good work in me. Keep doing. Come on, tell them. Keep doing the good work in me.